It's dark. The world lies in sin and error pining. The shadows are conspiring, but a light is coming. The Lord has been quiet for four centuries. The prophets are gone. There are no signs to see. It's silent, but let me tell you something. A voice is coming. The patriarchs are long dead. The judges were traded for a bunch of crowned heads. This monarchy, though, consistently failed and misled. No system is working, but there's a new king coming. Man's dead in religion. Legalism reigns. Ceremonial acts, which are just simply profane. The law is not working, but a new covenant is coming. The people are defiling. The rituals God is despising. Even the priests are compromising. And the sin offerings, they're worthless sacrificing. Oh, but get ready because a lamb is coming. The temple is a den of thieves. A brood of vipers are the Pharisees. Same too for the Sadducees. They don't even know there's a new high priest coming. The nations are suffering. Evil is chuckling. And the faithful are left wondering, does God even care? Oh, let me tell you something. Emmanuel is coming. God's people desire a glorious king. The world is yearning for eternity, a perfect sacrifice each soul desperately needs. It's a silent night, but hope is in sight. A most precious gift God is bestowing. The Bethlehem star begins glowing. Let the good news start growing. A baby is coming. Merry Christmas. Today is the day we have been preparing for throughout Advent. Jesus is born. Here is the story as recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7 from the Common English Bible. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax list. This first enrollment occurred when Cyrenius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Let us pray. We have been waiting for this day, loving God. We have prepared ourselves for this special day. On this Christmas day, let us live as those who let hope, peace, joy, and love reign in our lives. As the candles burn brightly and light our path, let us live as those who have the Christ light burning inside us today and every day. Amen. A blessed Christmas to all as we celebrate the Incarnation, God becoming fully human and fully divine to live among us. Good evening. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship. Merry Christmas. 
While it is neither Christmas yet nor actually evening, this service is produced by the Jagged First and the East End United Methodist Churches in Altoona, Pennsylvania. It is coming to you from the sanctuary of the East End Church. Whenever you are participating and from wherever you are gathering with us, by whatever device you are using to connect to this Christmas Eve service, know that you are welcome. Even though we are not gathering in person, we, will, we are connected by the presence of the Lord, and you are in the presence of the Lord. We all are in God's presence. With me uh, in producing our Christmas Eve service is my wife, Darlene Hickok, uh, Elaine Haupt, our uh, East End Church organist, and a very special friend, Michael Sellers Sr. from Huntington, uh, who is recording the service. You're not going to be able to see him. He's behind the cameras uh, today. He will also add video and choral music to the finished product, which, short of actually gathering in person, will make, it, make for a wonderful Christmas Eve worship celebration. The Advent wreath reading and the benediction as they have been for the season of Advent coming up until this Christmas Eve service uh, are by the Reverend Susanna D. Benedetto, pastor of Christ Congregational Church and Tacoma Park Presbyterian Church, Tacoma Park, Maryland, as submitted to Liturgy Link. The opening prayer uh, is taken from the worship liturgy written by the Reverend Dr. Jolene Willis, uh, our district superintendent for the Altoona District, and it was written for our district minister's Advent worship, which took place earlier uh, this month. I want to just take briefly a time to say something about the service that will be two and a half days. Uh, this coming Sunday, uh, at the invitation of the district superintendent, a number of pastors, approximately two dozen of us, uh, got together by Zoom and uh, email and various ways to record the service for this coming Sunday. It will be a special service with our uh, superintendent as our preacher, and it will be uh, on uh, our uh, Facebook sites at East End and uh, Jagger First and will be, uh, we expect to be posted by 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and we invite you to worship with us at that time as well. Let us be in the attitude of prayer. Lord, we come together and humbly ask, give us hope. Our hearts are saddened by the circumstances that surround us. Our hearts are grieved that we cannot celebrate your birth as we desire. But perhaps your hope is that we will return to the humble beginnings of that first Christmas, that we remember the stable, that we remember one bright star, that we remember the cries of the baby in the night, and that we remember smelly shepherds with their calloused hands and weathered faces. We open ourselves to the lessons you will teach us and ask that we clearly hear your voice so that we might faithfully lead the flock that you have entrusted to us and that we may be your flock as we go forth in your holy name. Amen. Oh, God. 
Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 through 7, and is taken from the New Revised Standard Version. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. As we come to the time of offering, again, I'd like to thank those who have been faithfully um, supporting the work and ministry of both the Jagged First and East End Churches. And for those who you who are watching have been supporting your own congregation, uh, that's an important part of the work in ministry that we do. But it's even more important as a part of worship, because it is part of our worship that we respond to God with our gratitude and our thanksgiving as a way of saying thank you to God. Not a way of paying God or giving God um, something that God doesn't have, but sharing from our heart with God as we give and as uh, most of you know that if you are uh, supporting either the Jagger First or the East End Churches the address for Jagger Church is 1801 uh, Pleasant Valley Boulevard the address for East End Church is 405 East Hudson Avenue both of them are Altoona Pennsylvania 16602 and uh, we pray that you are blessed as you bless others in uh, the giving uh, of from yourselves. Let us be in prayer. O oh Lord God, as we do come before you this evening, as we lift up our hearts in praise at the incarnation, the coming of the Christ child, we pause to offer our gifts and in the giving of our gifts, may you know the sincerity of our hearts as we give. And may what we give and what we share be blessed to your work, to the building of your kingdom, to sharing of your life. This we pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen. Our gospel reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20, and is called, it's taken from the Common English Bible. Nearby shepherds were living, living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angels stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, Glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told.
I am a shepherd. My father was a shepherd. His father was a shepherd, and his father's father was a shepherd. Shalom. My name is Obadiah. I was named after one of the great prophets of Israel, and I was raised by my family. A family who, was, who were shepherds. I was a little boy. I was always very interested in what my dad did. And when I was six years old, I stood in front of my father and said, I want to be a shepherd. He looked at me and thoughtfully said, I don't think so. When I was seven years old, I stood in front of my father and I said, I want to be a shepherd. And he said to me, a little more forcefully this time, I don't think so. Well, between the year of my seventh birthday and my eighth birthday, I would go out to the fields where the sheep were when my dad wasn't working. I would often go out and I got to know the sheep, and the sheep knew me. They knew my voice. When they became restless, I would sing to them, and they would settle down. I learned much from the other shepherds, and I kept going and going out to the field as often as I could. On my eighth birthday, I stood in front of my father and said, I am a shepherd. And from that day on, my dad was, if not pleased, at least open to my being with him and going out into the fields and being with the sheep. You see, I was born with a crooked leg, and I had a limp, and I wasn't as quick and as fast as the other boys my age. But, I did my best. And as a shepherd, I did what I could. And I did it with the other men as well as my father. And we would take care of the sheep and I would be part of what was going on. Now every shepherd needs a nickname. And of course, because I lived so, my nickname was Gimpy. Nobody knew me by Obadiah anymore. They just called me Gimpy. I'm still called Gimpy quite often these days, but I had a puppy that had a broken leg. And that puppy and I became fast friends. We understood each other. And everywhere I went, that limping around, that dog would limp with me. When it came time to shear the sheep, the sheep were divided among the shepherds. And I received a small lamb of my own. And that small lamb and I and the dog were inseparable. And as that lamb grew, and I took good care of it and to help take care of all the other sheep as well. One night, when I was in my early teens, we were out in the fields and we had gathered the sheep into the pen. It was a large uh, pen uh, in the shape of a C. And when the open end of the C was close enough, came close enough to the, the edges of the, of the walls, that one shepherd could lay down and become the gate for the sheep. And as we made sure the sheep were fine and we were ready to go back up to our shelter, except for the one who was to lay there. Suddenly, the, 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 the night sky just lit up. It lit up so much, and we were startled. We were frightened when a... We didn't know what it was at first, but it must have been an angel. It was an angel, and, and it spoke to us of a baby being born that night in Bethlehem just in town from where we were. Yeah. 
heavenly host started to sing. And almost as suddenly as it happened, it was over. And the shepherds began to say, well, hey, what's going on? Let's, let's go see what, what's taking place. And they went, they decided to go into Bethlehem to see what happened, happened and see what the angels were talking about. One of them said, okay, let's go, but wait a minute. Who will take care, who will take care of the sheep? Who, who will leave behind to watch the sheep? And the shepherds looked at one another, and then they all looked at me. They knew I couldn't keep up with them, or if they slowed down, it would take them a lot longer if I went with them in town. So they said, let Gibby stay behind. He'll take good care of the sheep. And they all went in to Bethlehem. When they came back, they had wonderful stories about the baby they found lying in the manger. And it was wonderful. And I was so excited about it. And I wanted to see for myself. And a couple days later, I got to go to town myself. But by the time I got there, the baby and his parents were gone. In the meantime, something terrible had happened. Herod had sent his soldiers, and there were a number of families who were devastated because of the death of their sons. I couldn't understand what was going on, but about 12 years later, I had gone up to Jerusalem. Jerusalem wasn't far, but on foot, it took a little while to get there, and with me being gippy as I, as I was, it took me a lot longer, but I still love to go to Jerusalem and go to the temple. And this day I was in the temple and I was standing over watching a group of men surrounded a young boy and they were talking intently. And it seemed uh, a good give and take when suddenly two people rushed in, a man and a woman who apparently were his parents. And they asked, where have you been? We've been looking all over for you for three days. And he said something about being in his father's house. I'm not sure what that was all about, but they left. I got married, had a flock of my own, and started a family. About 18 years after this episode in the temple, I began to hear about this man from Galilee. Some said he was from Nazareth, and he taught as one with power. I even heard that he healed people. They said his name was Jesus, and I was really curious. I was very interested in what all this was they were talking about, and so I decided I would go see if I could find this man and find out for myself. Well, I went to Galilee. And every time I heard about him being someplace, I went. But as slow as I was, by the time I got there, he was gone. I kept missing him. Sometimes it wasn't by much, but I kept missing him. And then finally one day, I heard that they were out in the wilderness near a mountain and I started out early in the morning. It took me most of the day to get there. And when I got there along the side of the hill was a large crowd of people and there was a man who was, they were all paying attention to. I wondered, is this the man I'm looking for? And as I began to approach. I heard some commotion about um, being hungry, feeding people. And I saw a young boy being brought before this man. And he handed him a basket. I learned later it had his fish and several loaves of bread in it. And I saw him break that. 
what was in the basket. Give it to the men around him, and they pass it out to everyone. And everyone sat down to eat. I was too busy, too eager, too, too much focused on this man who they called Jesus to be hungry or to eat. And as I approached, he said, Bethlehem, I remember you. I was so overcome. I fell on my knees and said, Master, he reached out, took my hand, and said, I have a gift for you. And he reached down and touched my leg. And for the first time in years, in fact, for the first time since I was a boy, I was able to walk without a crutch. Not only was I able to walk without a cr crutch, I was able to walk without a limp. Oh, the nickname Gippy stuck, and I'm fine with that, but I am able to walk normally. It was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I finally at last met this man that everyone had been talking about. Now, a year or so later, I went to Jerusalem for the Passover. And I was there on the first day of the week, and Crowds had been just outside the city gates. And they had been cheering and cheering, and it was this Jesus. And I thought, wonderful. We're going to overthrow the Roman yoke. We're going to be able to be free once again. But it didn't turn out that way. Within, before the week was out, people were yelling about against him and yelling crucify him and he was crucified on a cross on Golgotha just outside the city gates I was there when it happened I was there when they were leading them through the streets I saw one man rubbing his eyes and saying if I'd known I was going to see such a spectacle as this, I would have never asked to receive my sight. Another man not far away was sitting on a stallion. He was on this fancy horse and he said, I still have my riches and if I could give them all to make a difference in this day, I would. A young boy was over the other side and he said, if I only I was bigger. And I thought to myself, if only Gideon or Samson or one of the other heroes of the faith were here, we could do something about this. But they hung them on the tree. The man who thanked me for my lamb and gave me a healthy leg. But that's not the end of the story, folks. Three days later, there was what we thought an earthquake. Stone, stone rolled away from the tomb. And Jesus was risen. The Jesus of the cross was the Jesus of the resurrection and the Jesus that was born that night so many years ago are all one and the same. The same love brought to each of us, the same compassion, the same caring. I maybe missed out on seeing the birth, but I didn't miss out on his love. 
and I share the story anytime I have the opportunity to tell of his love. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to share that love with you as I tell you my story this evening. Shalom, and may God bless you.
as we come to the candlelight part of the service, I know there's so, so much that we haven't been able to do uh, doing this virtually. We've not had communion this, uh, this evening together. Uh, and we're not actually going to be able to pass the light uh, among everyone as we would if we were gathered here in person. But we're still going to have um, the candle lighting, uh, and we'll do that at least symbolically. Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. Hear these words from John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5 from the NIV. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. When we light the candles uh, on Christmas Eve, we take a candle and we come to the Christ candle, the Christ who is the light of the world. Christ shares that light with each of us. We're to take our light and not hide it under a bushel, but to let it shine for others. And when we take that light, we share it. And we take it and we share it, and as we share it with one another, and each one shares in turn with others, the darkness not only does not overcome the light, but the darkness becomes overcome. That the darkness becomes overcome by the light. And even though I cannot share the light with you at this time in person, I do that symbolically share the light with you. If you want to take a candle uh, and uh, light it uh, on your own in, uh, as part of your Christmas Eve uh, worship, I encourage you to do that. And remember that Christ comes to us as the light of the world, giving us light so that we may share that life with others.
May the peace and joy of our Lord, the goodwill of this season, be yours now and evermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.